Okay, so today we talked about um, norepinephrine receptors again, the different classes, and the um, role of alpha-1s, especially in major depressive disorder and, um, uh, and uh, anxiety disorders. Um, and uh, as a reminder from last time, we also discussed how norepinephrine receptor, I'm sorry, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors by enhancing norepinephrine cause a decrease in all of the numbers of receptors, but that the alpha-1 receptors decrease the most proportionally, which then leads to um, a, uh, a ratio that favors more the alpha-2s. Um, similarly, with serotonin, there are multiple receptors. There's actually a large number of serotonin receptors, but we're mostly focused on the 5-HT1s and 5-HT2s. Um, the inhibitory 5-HT1s tend to be calming, and the um, uh, the, um, uh, the cellularly complex 5-HT2s tend to have a sort of overwhelming aspect. And similar to um, norepinephrine, um, there's evidence that um, enhancing the amount of serotonin leads to, again, a bigger decrease in the number of 5-HT2s as compared to the number of 5-HT1s. Um, and then talked about the, um, the OPAL study, where they looked at um, serotonin uh, receptor antagonists, specifically 5-HT2 antagonists. And in this, they were mainly comparing um, 5-HT2 antagonists in mice that had learned helplessness versus uh, learned helplessness mice without 5-HT2. And what they found is that 5-HT2 antagonists in the period of a few days rather than weeks are able to um, improve symptoms of depression. Um, and so this is something that is currently being worked on in human trials. There's a downside of 5-HT2 antagonists. They also lead to long-term drowsiness, however. Um, we also discussed um, this CASPI study um, looking at the interaction between genetics and environment. Um, and they looked at three different genotypes. Um, uh, long, uh, homozygous long, meaning um, uh, which are the slower serotonin uh, reuptake molecules homozygous short, and then heterozygotes. Um, and what they found is that um, having one or two short alleles, especially in, when there is a um, uh, history of stress in somebody's life, leads to an increase in risk of major depressive disorder. Um, interestingly, there's actually some uh, indications here and in other studies that the short alleles, which are the risk alleles for depression, can actually um, also um, lead to better outcomes than the long alleles um, in people with low stress environments. Um, that's something that's a little bit beyond the scope of this class. The main thing to remember here is that um, with the long, homozygous long, it was very, um, uh, started out with a low risk, okay, started out with a low risk of depression and continued to have a low risk of depression um, uh, um, uh, with very little change with stress. Whereas with the short alleles, there was a much steeper risk increase with um, stress, especially for the homozygous short. Um, one last thing that we also discussed was the, um, this idea of therapeutic index. Um, and so for therapeutic index, um, the idea is that um, there is some uh, dose of a medication that is going to lead to um, uh, some dose of medication is going to lead to um, uh, improvement of symptoms, and so um, and then um, a higher dose that leads to um, either uh, uh, either respiratory depression or other side effects, um, including dangerous side effects. So respiratory depression can um, mean somebody could uh, stop breathing and die. Um, and it turns out that for a lot of drugs, especially benzodiazepines, what happens is um, the um, the therapeutic effects are in the cortex, and so the cortex shows compensation, which then means that after um, a lot of use, um, there are fewer GABA receptors in the cortex. It takes a higher dose to still get the same anxiety-relieving effects, um, and there's a much narrower window um, uh, before you get to um, inhibiting the brainstem to the point that it leads to um, uh, slowed respiration. Um, we'll return to that and discuss that a little bit more next time, along with some other aspects of anxiety disorder as well.